This is Overcomplicated Life Hacks Kitchen Edition, where we'll take your simplistic kitchen problems and provide solutions that are more complicated than canceling Comcast. Everyone loves to enjoy a nice, refreshing beverage in the heat of the summer, and nothing can make your drink cold as fast as a handful of crushed ice. Sure, full-size cubes can get the job done with a little more time, but all they really do is float to the top and slowly melt away until your drink is a lukewarm, watered-down shadow of its former self. So what's the real game plan when your ice dispenser kicks the bucket and you're left with a tray of lackluster frozen water? Well, giddy up, my friends, because here comes Penelope the Party Piñata, and she doesn't mind sacrificing herself so that you can beat the heat. And we don't mind because unicorns aren't real. Or are they? Go ahead and remove your vat of ice cubes directly from the freezer. Pop a hole in the top of your newfound friend and, either by hand or by funnel, stuff it with as much ice as you possibly can. Now that she's loaded, this fiesta's ready to begin. Hoist a line over any tall object and raise your party pinata to the sky. Keep in mind that donning your purple robe of polymorph plus three will quickly allow you to creep up on your prey undetected. Proceed to give your icy pinata a good thumping. Now you may find that your wizard staff crushes your pinata before the cubes themselves. If that's the case, try using something with a softer end, such as this poo emoji plunger that belonged to Merlin himself. Now that things are really heating up, it's time to capture those frozen shards that'll begin raining down upon you. Simply hold out an insulated bag and fill it up with all the beautiful crushed ice that a wizard needs. Fantastic. Now just conjure up three glasses and fill them with your frosty treasure. It's time for you to enjoy the fruit or lemon of your labor. Just be careful when filling your glass because everyone knows that unicorns have terrible vision and LASIK is just too expensive. Breakfast is coming and it's our esteemed honor to present Sir Bacon of the House Porcine. First of his name, the unburnt and breaker of fasts. Truly a defender of the breakfast realm. But as you know, even the mightiest warriors have flaws, and although Sir Bacon is always welcome to any feast, he often brings along his traveling companions, the Archduke of Greece and Baron Bubbleguts. So what do you do when you just ran out of paper towels and you don't have anything to drain the grease off your delicious meal? Don't stress, it's nothing that can't be solved with a little crafty kitchen construction. All you're gonna need is a couple adhesive wall hooks, some clothespins, and a little rope or clothesline, whichever you prefer. Find a suitable spot in your kitchen, preferably with a countertop, and measure out the length of rope that's gonna be needed to stretch between two walls or cabinets. Mount a hook on both sides using a tape measure to make sure that they're as level as possible. Now grab your rope and attach both ends to the hooks. We decided to use plastic lids to serve as our grease catchers. Hanging the bacon is just as simple as you might imagine. Fold just the tip of the bacon over the top of the rope and stick it into place with a clothespin. Just keep doing this all the way down the line and in just a few short minutes, you'll be left with bacon that's not only substantially less greasy, but also at a perfect temperature to devour. Look at all the runoff we collected from just one pack of bacon. Imagine how that might make your stomach feel if you didn't. You can use whatever you want to catch the grease yourself. Just don't drip it into the sink because it's horrible for your pipes. So that's all there is to it, a straightforward solution to your complex problem. Ah, so you're looking to whip up a delicious snack, but all you got is a hand mixer. Let's turn this carpal tunnel inducer into a cardiovascular jello producer. First, you need to grab that old elliptical that you promised you'd be using right now and place it out in an open area. Make sure that it has a wheel in the front, and if not, go buy one that does. Next, go ahead and place a hefty camera tripod adjacent to the exercise machine with a few feet of distance between the two. Great, grab your mixer and locate a slot on the base of the tripod. May take a bit of force, but carefully snap it under the leg brace. Now this is suitable in most cases, but if you can't find a slot, go ahead and strap it all down with several zip ties until it's secured in place, just like this. Move back over to the elliptical and bust out a roll of thin electrical tape. We're gonna place the tape directly onto the center of the wheel and roll it back so that it easily feeds itself through the machine. Once it comes out the other side, go ahead and peel off one end and stretch it all the way over to your waiting mixer. 
Attach it to the wheel of the mixer and feed it all the way around in a similar fashion. With your tape fully encompassing both wheels, attach the two loose ends of the tape together, forming one singular and powerful drivetrain for all your mixing needs. If it feels secure, go ahead and give the large wheel a nice slow spin just to make sure that you've got everything lined up perfectly. If you find the tape going to one side or the other, make any adjustments that are required to get a nice smooth flow. At this point, just place a mixing bowl under the egg beater and grab your ingredients. We'll be cooking up a batch of berry blue jello because it has our favorite actor Shia LaBeouf right there on the box. Just carefully pour out all of the contents of the box into your bowl, now add a couple cups of water as well. This might work much better if you place the bowl on a lazy Susan and recruit a fellow fitness LaBeouf to assist you. Hop on board your steel horse and start toning those quads. Now this thing moves fast, so make sure that you anticipate a little cleanup afterwards. You will of course eventually discover that you've become a true elliptical mixing master, capable of creating something as simplistic as jello, but enlightened enough to burn those calories off before you eat it. There are countless uses for a nice big bottle of distilled water. Plants love it, it prevents bacterial growth in humidifiers, and it even helps bring out the flavor of a cup of coffee. But what do you do if your hefty gallon jug starts running on empty? Simple, you build your own water distillery. To get started, you just need a basic tea kettle, a rubber stomper with a hole in it, and a little copper tubing that you borrowed from the construction site next door. The odds are that your copper tubing won't arrive in the shape that you need it so it's best to grab a large cylinder and carefully wrap it around, creating a series of loops. You'll want to make sure that both ends suit your needs, so carefully bend them into your desired shape. We'll be plugging the bottom end into a rubber stopper, and the top will be hooked around to drip directly into a bottle. Once you have this set up, it's basically ready to go. You just have to add water. Well, in our case, I went ahead and filled a glass with last night's bath water to show you just how effective this little distiller is. To give it a bit of a pre-treatment, I used a strainer while pouring the water into the kettle. All right, the kettle's loaded with our dirty, nasty water, so it's time to fire up the hot plate to full blast. While I would love to show you the process with the lid off, unfortunately, we can't bear to lose all of that heat out the top. So we're gonna put a glass topper on there so you can kinda see what's going on. Once the water starts to boil, the steam will travel up into the copper and then down through the coil slowly, condensing back into little droplets of water at the end of the spout. Now I won't say what comes out is absolutely perfect, but it certainly is more purified than what went in, though you can never be too sure with strange water sources. However, if you're planning on distilling already treated tap water, then it'll be nice and safe and free of any minerals and impurities when it comes out. In the end, you'll eventually produce a semi-full bottle of distilled water that's ready to be used however you see fit. Oh, and the best part? Well, that's simple. You'll save up to an entire dollar with just two to three hours of stovetop energy use and a mere $20 in copper tubing. But hey, you can use it over and over and over again. So, in a good seven to eight years, it'll easily pay for itself. One of the most sought after kitchen tools is the famed and rare magnetic knife holder. By sheer force of will, it allows you to slap your blades onto its mighty surface and it'll hold them for you until they're needed. But what if you can't afford such a luxury item? Well, isn't it obvious? You magnetize the knives instead. I brandished my choice cutlery and mounted it securely for a little modification. If you have some, just grab that old copper wire and start at the base of the blade. Carefully wrap the wire down, and you may need to clamp it in place to hold everything securely. Don't get me wrong, it's a real blast wrapping coil after coil, but take breaks if your hand gets a little sore because eventually you will make it all the way down to the tip. You can also clamp this end off as well to keep everything nice and secure. Now get yourself a nine volt battery and attach the front wire to the negative terminal. Once that's on there securely, grab the base cable and attach it to the positive terminal. You'll notice that the coils immediately begin generating heat. So keep your hands away while this runs from about 30 seconds to one minute. They can get quite intense during that time, but they're also magnetizing our metal. 
When all's said and done, remove the coils and give your blade a couple tests. Small screws should stick right to it with ease. This stool worked amazingly well for casual placement and the front of the stove made for a handy location while prepping a meal. But ultimately, I opted to mount my muffin tin to the wall and use it as a stationary place of rest for my favorite chefing tools. And that's it. What an avant-garde and beautiful piece to add to my kitchen. No need to spend 10 bucks on one of those silly magnetic strips, because as long as you've got batteries, some wire, and a will to succeed, you can do it all on your own. And that's what really matters, isn't it? Thank you for tuning in. If you want more overcomplicated life hacks, then you've come to the right end of a video. Just click the playlist on your screen to experience our full series. Thank you so much for joining us today, and please be so kind as to press that subscribe button on your way out. We'll see you soon.